This is Contactee, featuring paranormal and supernatural contact experiences with extraterrestrial, ultra-celestial, and multi-dimensional beings. Introducing Peter Maxwell Slattery with one of the most well-documented cases of contact with otherworldly beings. Peter is a lifetime experiencer, which led him to becoming an author. His books connect to your spirit and ET guides. CE5, Initiating Contact with Extraterrestrials, Operation Star Seed, Awakening, and his trilogy about the channeling experiences he had with a being named Shiji. And now Peter has produced a film called Multi dimensional. This documentary takes you on a mind-altering journey into who we really are with an alternative viewpoint on the paranormal focusing on the multi-dimensional aspect of the phenomena and how the paranormal, ghosts, UFOs, and consciousness are all connected. In this film, Peter takes you on a journey into his life with one of the most well-documented extraterrestrial contact cases in modern times. I am your host and the creator of SciSpy.tv, Suzanne Ross, and it is truly my pleasure to present to you this fascinating interview with my friend, Peter Maxwell Slattery. I'm so excited to dive into everything super weird and go far out. <laughs> great, great. Yeah, we can go wherever you want to go with this. Great. So, yeah. Great. Definitely. How's everything going there in Australia? Yeah, well, I'm, I've got my own sanctuary, so I'm in between like hundreds of acres or thousands of acres of farmland, so I'm opening this up in the next few months, so I haven't been sort of affected because I'm used to being by myself in the middle of nowhere anyway, so everywhere else it's a little bit different depending on what state you're in with the type of laws that are in place, things like that, but there is a lot of lifting now. I think in the next couple of weeks, even I think in um, Sydney, New South Wales today, they're opening up, but not for the vaccinated, but in two months, the, the unvaccinated will have the same rights as the vaccinated. So it's just a bit of a weird thing. Apparently some of the COVID laws like passports may be in play in some of the other areas they're not going to use the COVID passport. It's just all over the shop. So I'm pretty lucky that I'm in a situation where I'm just doing my own thing and I'm out in the wilderness. So yeah. But I love it where I am, so it's yeah, it hasn't affected me too much. Except I don't see people really, but I see you know otherworldly beings, but not you know people on a regular basis. So yeah, they're not asking for a passport yet. <laughs> no, they just materialize or they just take me, and you've got to roll with it. Yeah. That's one way to travel, right? Without a passport. <laughs> yeah, I love that, it. Yeah. Awesome. Be good to do it, but it would cause a bit too much trouble in some instances. In some incidences, if I teleported over to the ranch in America, to East City or wherever, <laughs> it could cause some. So I'm just saying, put at the moment. <laughs> All right, great time for teleportation. <laughs> yeah, we need to get the technology out, or just use the light body and do it that way. Right, let's just travel at our Merkaba. <laughs> yeah. Awesome. Well, let's just get, let's dive in. So I'll introduce right. you. I have a TV network yeah. called SciSpy.TV. Saw a vision in meditation. SciSpy, merging science and spirituality. And I knew I was being That's called perfect. to design a TV network and I'm friends with many of the people that you're friends with. James Gilliland is a good friend of mine. 
talked to him quite a bit at different events and interviewed him a couple times and he's just so humble i love james you can tell yeah. he's a higher being because he's super humble like i asked him <laughs> like how do you want me to introduce you he's like toilet cleaner like <laughs> he's like there's nothing i don't do on e so <laughs> yeah uh, definitely it's um he's a good man yeah so yeah and i'll blast this out once it's out as well I'll be blasting cool. across my network channels as well. So yeah, thank you for doing this. Awesome. My pleasure. Hello, and thank you so much for joining us for Contact E on SciSpy.tv. I am your host, Suzanne Ross, and I am so excited to be here today with lifelong experiencer, Peter Maxwell Slattery. Peter has written several books about his contactee experiences and how you too can make contact. And now he has a brand new film called Multidimensional. Joining us from Australia is Peter Slattery. Welcome, Peter. Thank you for having me on. Great to connect. I just love your personality. I've watched you on a few different YouTube interviews and you just have such an open, transparent way of presenting about all of your experience since the age of seven. And so I really want to dive right in and go multidimensional. I want to hear about what you've been experiencing since a young child. And then we can talk about your books and your new film. Definitely. So it's sort of a bit of like back and forth because I think like many experiences, there's some things you sort of don't connect or have a, what I call an aha moment until later on. It's just, whether it's social engineering, upbringing, education, stuff that we've got stored in our epigenetics and the way that we just sort of have our outlook on life. It's really a bit of a back and forth thing because I think uh, something that all humans deal with, like the human aspect of the human experience is if we can't see, touch, taste, smell something or get exter external validation, we tend to sort of doubt it. So a lot of stuff started for me around the age of seven. There's a few things before that, but really vague. So I don't really talk about it because it's just already out there enough. But there was more what I could term telepathic communication. And it was a female that was communicating this, these, we could say, messages, insight, guidance, for telling things before they would happen. And... My parents were like, how the hell are you doing this? And I explained it to them. I, I can remember t talking to our doctor at one time, the family doctor. He was like, well, it's nothing negative and we can't explain it. So, you know, just, I guess it was sort of just blown off at that time. But I moved into a house around that time. I sort of pin it back to about the ages of between eight and 12, because I moved to my father's at 12 at that time. So what I would wake up to is a gray alien in my bedroom. Now, I don't usually talk about the first concept of, or the first construct of it, which is I'd see Kirk Cobain, the singer of Nirvana. Which, right, I you heard know, that. I think, I think looking back at that, that's more of the point of I was into Nirvana. I'm a drummer, I'm a guitar myself. It was something that I think they thought, all right, let's just sort of wean him into this. But to tell you the truth, it scared the crap out of me. I'm yeah. like this is Kirk Cobain and he's walking around and in my bedroom. And then I just pulled up the sheets and couldn't deal with it. And then over time, particularly in one experience, it, there would be a distortion, like in between each vibration, it was like an overlapping of Kirk Cobain. And then you could actually see what it was, which was a gray. Now I didn't see it as an alien, an angel, a demon. I just didn't know what the hell it was and didn't, really didn't want to see it sometimes there'd be more than one sometimes there'd be three sometimes there'd be one and there'd be light coming in from the the curtain the peripheral because i'll turn that way to get away from this thing and i'll just see light shining in there so whether that was a craft outside whether it was early in the morning and the sun was coming up i've got no idea because we're going back and this was sort of it was regular not like a nightly thing but it was a regular sort of experience that would happen um over that amount of years four year period so 12 years old i had my first sighting of 
it looked like a disc, more like a weight on the end of a weight bar. And it was just a matte gray. There wasn't much detail except I think it's due to probably the distance. But even to this day, when I go back, because when you're a child, you sort of look at things like, for example, I used to think about when I was in this tent, when we'd go camping and I saw the tent as an adult and it looked tiny. But when I was a kid, the tent was big. <laughs> but measuring this craft and even in later years having another experience with this craft it had to have been three times the size of a football field so it was huge and i was just walking down to the service station gas station to get a, a slurpee one day um and it was like this bottle i can remember clear as day we had this bottle that you buy it with the slurpee one time and you go back and refuel or re refill it and it would change colours from the temperature. So I was going down one hot summer's day. I believe it was summer at that time. And I can just remember seeing, looking up at the end of this road and down the end of this road, there's sort of a view of Red Light Hill. It's slightly off it. But this massive craft just sort of like went across in the sky and still out of view, cutting out the hill. And yeah, that was sort of like the first sighting, but it didn't, you know, I wasn't sort of, interested like there was times i look back and go to the to the library and pull out paranormal ufo books and just read them at lunchtime i don't even know why i did but it wasn't something i'd go out of my way i wouldn't watch movies except maybe independence day i'm only 37 so at that time that was sort of coming out you know in my childhood years um but high strangeness was a regular occurrence after that and i would have and other ufo sightings and then it got to around 2010 where i started and still to this day film these crafts interact with the beings on a regular basis after i started seeing blue orbs uh, around 2011 2012 i was introduced to these beings that or one being first that uh there was lightning and it teleported into my bed uh, to my lounge room as a liquid blue light being and later on with another being it explained that it was the elohim and then i would start to have experiences which still happen every now and then with these beings in terms of there will be a group of them um inside of what i could saw could say is like a crystal sort of cathedral sort of thing which is a craft but maybe a meeting place i don't know i was starting to think it was a craft but now i think it's like a meeting place but it's got so far out there from where the stuff started that I'm still integrating it now, even though I'm doing readings, I'm helping people make contact with themselves. This is where I'm still going through development. I might be a teacher, but I'm first and foremost, a student reconnecting with what I could say I know on the higher levels. So that's a lot of information sort of action packs into a short sort of excerpt. But um, yeah, that's just to give people a brief thumbnail out, uh, outline of that. And so I heard you in another interview explain that we are, as our source self, actually the Elohim. And the Elohim show up in different rainbow rays of light. And this is like yeah. our original self. Yes. Yeah, so there's different, the way it's been shown and explained to me is there's different levels of them. And there's even ones that can appear as humanoid uh, sort of fiery energies where I believe it's them in a light body, but they're projecting a form. So this is where I saw, like, for me, for example, I started seeing the blue orbs, but then they showed me we are the blue orbs. So they're just, what I could even say on a high level, they might be formless, shapeless, gaseous, massive energy. And that that's not really what that what they're projecting to me, but that's what they are. Because I've seen in one experience the blueprint of the universe of everything being made up of these purple hue dodecahedrons. And what they showed me was that everything on a minuscule level, like beyond subatomic particle, is made up of these. Like they first showed me like grass, um, trees, uh, objects like bench seats, plant, you know, everything like that. And then humans, and then they showed me the earth was a dodecahedron. And I looked out and I could see the moon and other sort of satellites and planets within the system that they were purple hue dodecahedrons in the sun. And then we moved out and I could see this galaxy as a dodecahedron, or this solar system as a dodecahedron, then the galaxy, and then the universe 
And I was on a sort of like the, the side of it and I turned around and they're like, these are all other universes. You would call these different gods, but they've got their own planes and dimensions and they're we're all a greater body of a super intelligence, like a greater intelligence. I had to stop there because I was like, I can't even digest part of this, let alone now you're telling me that there's other gods which later down the track, it was revealed that we on a soul level, once we get to a certain state of development, we could be a master, we could stay in the Elohim state, we can do many things, but we can also divide off from this universe and create our own universe with its own unified field, with its own planes and dimensions and our own cells of Elohim to go out within us to experience and gain knowledge. And those cells could divide off from us again and replicate. And that's where I was like, you know, that's where I'm at today with advanced levels of this, but it's like I say, I wouldn't even know a percent out of a billion trillion, whatever percent of what's going on. I just, I may know a lot compared to some, but it's not like I've got the whole picture. That's why this type of thing is great because we've all got a piece of that jigsaw puzzle. And so our original source self is a dodecahedron, just like the Elohim. Well, the way I describe this is I believe that they will show me a way that the human body computer can digest because there is geometry and everything is fractal. There was toroidal fields at times as well. So the way I describe it is depending on your level of consciousness, looking in on that construct to some, it might not be a dodecahedron. It might be something else, but I'm seeing the dodecahedron in science now even repeat itself. And maybe I was seeing a light blue, a light blueprint version of that because they have showed me at one point i don't think i've spoken about this it was almost like a one day or two day you could say a flat plane of existence and they look like hexagons where if you get a dodecahedron and put it like that it does look like a hexagon and all of them were this light and they'll show me that metatron the highest expression and forget about wings and all that though i believe the angels have different aspects Metatron works in sync with it as its master of the electron and assists with the Elohim of giving everything a symbiotic relationship. So I think on the highest level, that's even illusionary because the way it's been shown to me is everything is consciousness and awareness, which goes into a vibratorial state, which is sound. Sound creates light. So sound vibration would have created that imagery and light creates physical matter. So even when we're dealing with light beings, they may be in a form of ascension, but they're not ascended purely because when you're ascended purely, you are shapeless, you are formless, you are actually all that is. There's nothing to define you because you are everything. So this is where even the angels, we could say they're highly evolved messengers or light beings, but they're not it. They're sort of designed beings to work throughout everything because they've got to be able to we could say interface with us and the high, higher we could say extraterrestrials or higher humans high forms of intelligences all the way up to those which are just pure we could say constructs of vibration so this yeah this is where it's like what i say to people it's not black or white the shade of gray in the middle is like huge because a lot of people tend to want yes or no or is it this way or that way and it's like it's all the above and you've got to look at all possibility 360 degree unboundedly at everything or else we can't get this and it's not putting people down but i've learned over the years that we have to throw looking at things in a linear way out the window with this because if we look at things linear we're just not going to develop in physics in science and spiritual constructs and ideas and uh, really get to anything with this but I believe out of the body on this level here we know it all I think we know it all when we're connected to the mind behind the mind which is our cell of God's mind we could say which connects you to everything so it's tricky and that's why it's hard for me sometimes to articulate these things and I hope I'm doing an okay job because you're trying to get something that really it's not even touching a percent of what I could describe of what they've actually shown me because I'm trying to put it into human terms, in this case, English, and explain something that's layered and not in a linear perspective. You're doing a wonderful job expressing it beautifully. And I have recently come on to this discovery 
by Garrett Lisi, this, this theoretical physicist who lives in Hawaii and surfs all day while he isn't figuring out how the universe works. And he came up with this shape, and you may be familiar with it, called the E8 lattice or the E8 crystal. And it's this spherical mandala shape that within it, you can have all of the elements that make up our reality. And so what him and some other physicists have come to the conclusion of is that our reality, our 3D reality is being projected from the eighth dimension into the fourth dimension to formulate this 3D reality. To As above, so below. Right? Yeah. And so yeah. it's like the source. And so you talk about the dodecahedron, which is really made up of tetrahedrons. And what they're saying is the tetrahedron is the you know smallest fractal of creation. And so I had this vision that, you know, of, so if the world is being projected onto 3D from this spherical mandala made up of tetrahedrons what if our source self is projecting these holographic fractals of itself as beings is also a spherical mandala and this 360 degree pattern would make it possible to project in all directions this fractal versions of itself so not to go off on a tangent, but you know no, no, said, and it reminds me. That. It reminds me of something. I can't remember what it was called, but there was this, there was this mandala uh, recently that I saw. It was just on a meme somewhere, and I didn't research, so we could say it's Facebook fact. But then I've I've seen a lot of work with four, three, two, and the you know with sound, and then they put sound on the plate with psion, uh, psionics, and you see the uh, the projection of geometry from sound. There was this advanced mandala that apparently I think it was like Indians or yogis, they meditate on this. And they actually found that there was a key note that when they play it, it projected this geometry. So that's where I was saying the dodecahedron would be one frequency that maybe that was the way at the time with my development, I could fathom what they were trying to show me on, on the best way. Because I think that as we go through this development, they're trying to work with you in such a way that they meet you halfway and then you're at a certain level. So they're going to meet you at that level, which gives you the stepping stone to get to the next level and get the next bit of information. And so this is where it is convoluted like that because it's like sometimes I'll even get told by whatever being that's coming through, they'll tell me something. And then three months later or three years later, they'll elaborate and I'll get it, but I didn't get it at the start, maybe because my consciousness wasn't elevated enough to understand what they were trying to show me. So this is where it's continuously just a stepping stone with all this. But um, like I said, I just think we know it all on a higher level. It's just trying to filter that through to the biological computer, the human body to, I guess, fathom and, and rise to that occasion to connect with that information. Well, the information that you've been downloading from these higher beings, from these extraterrestrial beings, celestial beings, is truly extraordinary, Peter. And your experiences that you have shared from connecting with celestial and extraterrestrial, Pleiadian, Orion, Arcturian, Syrian, and all of them seemingly giving you different information and you're kind of putting the pieces of the puzzle together to come up with some conceptual ideas about the true nature of reality, who we are and why we're here and the positive and negative forces as well, which I thought was really fascinating. So let's dive into some of your interactions with some of these extraterrestrial beings. I understand that you came into contact with this being Shiji back in 2012. Yeah. And now you've written a yeah. three uh, series of books on that that become bestsellers. So let's dive into Shiji and what information she has to share. Stay tuned for part two, where we explore the knowledge and wisdom of Shiji. 
Thank you for watching Contactee on the Angels, Aliens, and Masters channel of SciSpy.tv.